to understand what I do at the National Institute of Justice, uh, you need to understand what the National Institute of Justice does. We are the research and development agency within the Justice Department. Our mission is to make America safer by solving real world pro crime problems through science and innovation. So as, uh, when I, as I direct this organization, this institute, I am trying to create an environment here where good ideas can flourish. That means attracting their, the right people, the right kinds of scientists, creating an environment where they can uh, develop new and innovative ideas. Um, my, my first response to anyone that's interested in the field of forensic science, that's looking at it from a career standpoint, is to understand that the science uh, well beyond anything is the most important part. Uh, so understanding science, uh, being good at it, having an appreciation for it, uh, having the knowledge and background is really the most important part. Uh, so all, that, all of the other things will fall into place, but uh, you know, good science is where it all starts. We've had a number of successes here at NIJ, but one that really comes to mind was a study that showed the effectiveness of John schools. And the primary effectiveness of John schools, which are one-day education programs for sex buyers, was the significant reduction in recidivism rates amongst men who participated in these John schools. And what it's led to is a movement to create more John schools across the country so that judges have, a, have an additional tool when they are sentencing those who have been convicted of purchasing sex. Uh, for example, uh, policing. One of the uh, interesting questions is, how long should police be on a shift? And I've asked uh, police officers how long they serve, and some will say eight, some will say 10, some will say 12, and some will even confess to having 24-hour shifts sometimes. And uh, it's been an open question, what is the right shift length? We actually randomized police officers in two departments to have either eight, 10, or 12-hour shifts. They did those shifts for about a year, and we calculated various outcomes from their shifts. Um, how, did they show up on time? Were they happy? Did they have good performance? Did they make uh, the right number of arrests? And were they productive? And we found that the right answer is 10 hours. So with the research that we do at, at, in the Office of Science and Technology and, and NIJ, um, you know, the, the impacts can have, there can be, the impacts can come at different times. Maybe uh, it's very immediate at the, the end of a project, but sometimes those impacts can be because of the nature of research, maybe 5, 10, 15 years down the road. We've uh, funded researchers at Michigan State to develop uh, new algorithms to match forensic sketches um, to mug shots uh, in, in a, like a law enforcement agency's mugshot book. Um, that's a very challenging problem. Um, and it required a new way uh, for the computer scientists to look at the problem rather than the, the way it's done when you match, say, one mugshot to another mugshot. Very soon, we will be able to have the technology to take that mugshot and run it against a, a criminal mugshot database, and maybe that person is in one of the top hits, and maybe law enforcement can generate a lead and maybe they can find that person quicker. And maybe that'll prevent a crime. And maybe that will save somebody's life. And that is an impact that we have here. When we go out to the field and we visit law enforcement uh, or we uh, see other members from crime laboratories, uh, there's truly a very high recognition, high value for what the National Institute of Justice provides to the forensic science community. Uh, we provide well over $100 million a year in assistance uh, in terms of research and development awards, uh, technology assistance, training. Uh, so all of that does have, obviously has a, has a major impact on the community and it's very, very well recognized. I think one of the things I find most enjoyable about working at NIJ is the ability to help shape the research community and to connect them to practitioners. When you work in the academic sector and you work in private, the private sector, you're not always able to take the 30,000 foot view of where research is leading to and making sure that those who need it the most have an ability to speak to those priorities. That's my job here at NIJ. I think one success story that NIJ has had is in the area of crime mapping. About, say, 15, 20 years ago, 
crime mapping, the technology, even the idea of it was really in its infancy. Uh, scientists at NIJ recognize this as a real potential, have, this technology having real potential to change how criminal justice works, how police operate. So slowly investments started being made to advance new technologies, new methodologies, and once those technologies were in place to test how do we use these technologies. Um, and pretty soon we got to this a very stable spot where we had Nowadays, we have pretty much every police department that wants to do crime mapping, has access to the software, can use the, the technology. It's a real success story. Crime mapping went from nothing to really pervasive.